Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the channel. Today we will continue the discussion of complications of otitis media. Uh, in the first part, the link of that part is there in the description. So you are requested to look at that before embarking upon this discussion because there we have discussed the nomenclature of uh, different types of complications which can result uh, from otitis media whether it is acute or chronic and then their roots of spread that how these complications can occur at distant areas from middle ear infections and what are the predisposing factors and uh, there we also came to know that there can be intracranial and extracranial complications and extracranial complications can be intratemporal or extratemporal. So, one of these complications we will talk about today. So, let's start discussion. And uh, you are requested to like and uh, subscribe and share the channel. So, one of the extracranial complications is what we call as mastoiditis. Now, this term mastoiditis is used when infection spreads from the mucosa which is lining the mastoid air cells to involve the bony walls of the mastoid air cell system. Now, this is very interesting because we know that mastoid air cell system is a part of middle ear cleft. So, until and unless the infection is confined to the mucoperiosteal lining of the middle ear cleft, that is otitis media. But once this uh, infection goes beyond mucoperiosteal lining and it involves the underlying bone, then it is a complicated otitis media. So, mastoiditis is when the bony confines of mastoid air cell systems has been affected by the infective process, then we will call it as mastoiditis. It can be acute coalescent mastoiditis or it can be masked mastoiditis. So, we know that the Mastoid air cell system is continuous with the uh, tympanic cavity through the opening which we call as aditus. If this aditus becomes blocked due to infections, mucosal edema or due to granulations, then what will happen? The secretions will pent up or retained in the mastoid air cell system and gradually the pressure will build up. And this stasis of secretions, this will lead to hypremic decalcification because normally we know that this mastoid air cell system is just like a honeycomb and bony septa are there. So, what will happen due to this hypremic decalcification, these bony septa which are in between, they are destroyed and this honeycomb, it is converted into a single cavity as you can see here in this picture that this honey, instead of being honeycomb it is converted into a single cavity after resorption of the bony septa of the air cells and this coalescence of small air cells lead to form a cavity and ultimately this is what we call as empyema of the mastoid cavity so this is the uh, nutshell of what we just discussed that there is production of the pus under tension that will lead to hypremic decalcification and osteoclastic resorption of the bony septa. So, then there is destruction and coalescence of these air cells leading to a single pus cavity or empyema of the mastoid. Ultimately, even the overlying skin can give way and there can be what we call as mastoid fistula. So, this is a disease of childhood and the peak age is around 6 years of age. Usually, it is a sequelae of acute suppurative otitis media. So, streptococcus pneumoniae or hemophilus influenzae or pneumococcus can be the underlying causative organisms. But still, 25% of coalescent mastoiditis are being seen in sclerotic 
temporal bone with chronic otitis media with cholestatoma. So there will be earache, there will be fever, ear discharge which will be profuse and purulent and mastoid tenderness. Then there will be what we call as mastoid reservoir sign. This is that we do mopping of the external auditory canal and we remove all the discharge. Immediately it will fill up. So it means that there is a reservoir which is present in the mastoid region and this is called as mastoid reservoir sign. There will be sagging of the posterior meter wall. Of course, eardrum perforation will be there and there will be swelling, tenderness and bulging in the mastoid region, which means that ironed out mastoid, that mastoid bone has given way. And now the um, pus collection is there just under the subperiosteum. Hearing loss, which will be conductive type of hearing loss. And uh, this is how this ironed out mastoiditis can present that uh, there will be a swelling which is tender and red in color in the mastoid area in the post auricular region. Uh, the persistence of otoria beyond three weeks with adequate treatment in case of acute otitis media, it indicates that now mastoiditis has occurred. RL swab should be sent for culture sensitivity and it will show a streptococcus pneumonia as I just mentioned. There can be pseudomonas aeruginosa also, streptococcus aureus also, depending upon whether the otitis media underlying is acute or chronic. High resolution uh, CT scan of the temporal bone will show us coalescence of these mastoid air cells. As you can see here in this uh, on this picture that there is a coalescence and single mastoid cavity. In contrast, on this side, you can see the mastoid cellular system is intact and this is normal on this side. In the differential diagnosis, we should keep in mind the superation of uh, superficial mastoid lymph nodes in this region. Uh, there can be infected spacious cyst in post auricular region or frunculosis of the external auditory canal. Now this is the table which is present there in your book as well and uh, when we were discussing the frunculosis of the external auditory canal, uh, there also I shared this uh, slide, uh, you can say at uh, this table. So it differentiates different features starting from history up till radiology along with clinical features how to differentiate between acute mastoiditis and frunculosis of the external auditory canal. So it should be there on your fingertips and uh, you should memorize this from your book. So as far as management is concerned, once the complication is there, so urgent hospital admission is must and we will have to start with the broad spectrum intravenous antibiotics which should be triple regime. When we say triple regime, it means the antibiotics which we will select for uh, this particular patient that should cover the gram positive, gram negative and anaerobes as well till the culture sensitivity report is available and accordingly we can tailor our antibiotics. If there is a subperiosteal abscess, so the general surgical principle that pass anywhere, it should be drained out. So incision and drainage of the subperiosteal abscess by post auricular incision should be there. If abscess formation is not there and only the tenderness is there, then we can think about and if there is a small perforation in the tympanic membrane and we think that it is not sufficient to drain whole pus which is present in the tympanic cavity and the mastoid air cell system, then we can do the meringotomy to drain it from there as well. In uh, if there is no response to medical treatment in 48 hours or there is a sagging of posterior meter wall or there is development of some new complication then we should uh, subject to what we call as cortical mastoidectomy because as I just mentioned the acute mastoiditis is usually a complication of acute otitis media so we will do cortical mastoidectomy. But if in some cases, if it is due to chronic superative otitis media, then at least we have to do the modified radical mastoidectomy. 
masked mastoiditis as the name indicates it is slow destruction of the mastoid air cells acute signs and symptoms of acute mastoiditis are not there natural process of acute mastoiditis is halted by the antibiotics that the patient has started the antibiotics so fever has settled down pain has settled down pus or drainage or uh, ear discharge has reduced but not completely resolved and uh, this antibiotic it may be either it is inadequate antibiotic therapy regarding its dose that uh, proper dose is not being taken or frequency of antibiotics is not Uh, according to the schedule or uh, it is not used for a proper duration so that may lead to masked mastoiditis but pain as i said discharge fever and mastoid swelling will be absent in case of masked mastoiditis and on examination middle ear apparently looks free from infection but there will be persistence of symptoms of mastoiditis and tympanic membrane fails to normalcy that it does not become normal some type of congestion will remain there and there will be blockage of editus by granulations or cholesteatoma especially in case of chronic suppurative otitis media so on mastoidectomy there will be extensive destruction of the air cells with granulation tissue and dark gelatinous material which is filling the mastoid cavity in case of masked mastoiditis now if it is not treated or infection is more severe this infection can extend through the cortex and uh, air cells of the mastoid air cell system into the subperiosteal region leading to what we call as mastoid abscess or subperiosteal abscess and this is the most common you can say outcome of mastoiditis or uh, there can be another abscess which we call as bezoals abscess to be specific von bezoals abscess there can be collection of pus in the external auditory canal which we call as meatal abscess or lux abscess there can be collection of pus along the zygomatic arch that's what we call as zygomatic abscess there can be pus formation along the posterior belly of digastric muscle which we call as sitalis abscess or this mastoid abscess can extend to parapharyngeal space or to the retropharyngeal space leading to respective abscesses mastoidal spread can lead to uh, distant uh, foci of these thrombus and this is due to perforators present in the blood vessels especially in children but this is rare so sequelae of acute mastoiditis coalescent mastoiditis as i just mentioned the most common is subperiosteal abscess so this is the diagrammatic representation of what we discussed that the post auricular abscess which is actually the subperiosteal abscess lux abscess as i told you it can be there in the meatus bezoals abscess bezoals abscess can be there along the sternocleidomastoid muscle then lux abscess just mentioned sitalis abscess can be along the posterior belly of digastric medially it can extend and lead to pterocytosis or labyrinthitis even facial paralysis and intracranial complications can also occur with otitis media and we will discuss all these one by one in some other sitting so this is the skull dry skull this is the external auditory canal above and behind is the A mastoid air cell system different mastoid air cells are there so if uh, abscess is there in the meatus we call it as lux abscess if it is there along the in the zygomatic cells then we call it as zygomatic abscess if it it can extend medially it can go into the parapharyngeal and retropharyngeal and from the tip cells if they burst the abscess can track along the sternocleidomastoid muscle which is attached here and this is what we call as bezoals abscess this is post auricular abscess or subperiosteal abscess which is the most common and if from the tip cells the abscess is tracking along the sternocleidomastoid muscle then we call it as 
dissolves abscess and if you can appreciate it, it can be there in the swelling in the upper part of the posterior triangle just behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It can be a swelling there. So, bisolved abscess, it may lie deep to the sternocleidomastoid muscle or it may be present in upper part of posterior triangle as I just uh, showed you in the picture in the previous slide. It can extend up to the parapharyngeal space or it can track down along the carotid vessels. So, accordingly, according to the extent of this abscess, we have to drain it out and not only we have to drain out these different types of abscesses, whichever is present, but the underlying otitis media should be dealt with on merit. So, it should be differentiated from Bizol's abscess. You can say differential diagnosis of Bizol's abscess is acute upper jugular lymphadenitis. Abscess or mass in the lower part of the parotid gland. An infected branchial cyst. Parapharyngeal abscess. Or jugular vein thrombosis. So, this is the differential diagnosis of Bizol's abscess. So, with that, we finish uh, today's discussion and uh, we will continue with these other different types of extracranial complications. You are requested to like, share and subscribe the channel. Thank you very much.